Thanks guys. So I'm Quang. Uh, I'm currently a platform engineer at Wiki. I been it's been an honor to be here with you today. Uh, my talk is about building reliable and scalable workflows with step functions. Okay, let's get to it. For the agenda, yeah, of course I have to talk something about my Wiki first, and then we go on to discuss workflows. What are they? What uh, do we have at Wiki? What are the problems we face and the journey from uh, when we discover the problems, how we approach it, and how we mm, design and uh, solve the problems. And of course, we, I will conclude with some lessons we learned along the way. Okay, so Wiki. So we are an OTT company that offer subscription video on demand or ask video on demand. Uh, with the focus on Korean and Chinese content, currently we have like around I think more than three thousand shows, with maybe eight, seventy thousand, eighty thousand videos, and okay. So what's the difference uh, between Viki and other OTT services is that our subtitle is actually delivered by our fans. So anyone that use Viki services, you can go in and then. Uh, contribute to the subtitles and then you will be recognized as a qualified contributor and we given a uh, gift card a coupon for subscriptions oh they give you some numbers we have uh, around 1.5 billion minutes of view of video stream per month and 1.5 billion more than that was translated on the engineering side we are quite a small team we only around 30 engineers uh, in total, or backend is or is half of that. We manage around uh, fifty plus microservices, which we do around one hundred views per day for deployment, maybe ten to twenty per week. Yeah. Okay, so let's get on with workflow. So, what is it actually? So, on the. Uh, Dictionary definition is a sequence of process that will enable uh, some work to go from initiation to completion. And in other words, simplify is just a list of steps that uh, can be represented either by a graph, a flow, chart, or a diagram. So why is workflow important? I, this is a, a bit over generalized, but almost everything or anything is a workflow or can be represented as a workflow. Like for example, if you're going to a uh, fair price to buy groceries, there's let's list all the steps that you need. Maybe first time you write down all the items you need, and you go through a loop of picking up each item and then checking if it's, you have completed or not. And at the end, you uh, go to the counter, pay, and then go home. That can be considered a workflow when you're buying groceries. So in engineering term, workflow are usually associated with maybe important business decision, business logics, and yeah. So what are the workflows that we have at Viki? We have all kinds of workflow ranging from user email verification, as you can see here. Maybe when user click an email link, we check the token that is embedded in the link. If it's expired, no, a valid and uh, and not expired, then we can go for. Otherwise, we display the error and send a new one. This is just a simplified version of the flow. We have another flow for app release. Let's say, example, when we want to release a new app version of Wiki to the Google Play Store or to the Apple App Store, we have to first start with a release build, and then we go to some unit test, integration test. Uh, someone has to sign off that, and after that, we can push it to the market. We have workflows for videos and coding. Since we, our main business is uh, it flow around videos, so of course we have need to have some multimedia workflows. So I will focus uh, more from now on on the multimedia side because I, that's what I'm, I was working on since I joined Viki. Yeah, feel free to stop me at any point. If you have any question. So I'll uh, talk a bit about our content ingestion pipeline. 
So where do we get those videos and what do we do with it? So our content providers from either from China, Korea, maybe Japan as well. Recently, we, all, we just launched Japanese verticals. The, we uh, give them a portal so they can go in and then upload their content to our content management system called CMS. From there, if you go to our uh, business logic, the video service called TIA, apparently the guy uh, started this service uh, like Greek God, so the TIA is the name of the Greek God. <laughs> and we have a service called Media Engine, which is in charge of encoding all the videos. And after we encode all the videos, it will go to storage. Right now, it's uh, currently reside on AWS S3, which is object storage. So what are the problems that we see uh, with, OK. For example, let's say uh, this is an encoding flow in our pipeline. Hmm. When we get the video, first we extract some information, some metadata. Then we go on to encode it to multiple resolution, say 240p. After 240p is done, we parallelly do four things. We release 240p first because we want to get our fan to start subtitling. Uh, in the meantime, we also did, uh, encode it to other resolution and release everything. So a video needs to be encoded in multiple resolution in with different formats and different dependencies. In the sense of maybe a video format needs to have something uh, encoded before that so they can reuse it and then put it in a different format. So, uh, and explain it a bit later, so uh, uh, a bit more. So let's say I want to encode it in format B, but in order to encode it in format B, I have to have it in ABC first. So yeah, that's a dependency chain there. So our implementation for that was purely ABI based uh, with a chain of network calls. What I meant is that hmm, uh, you remember uh, this is our video business service, which all the logic reside here. And this is just an, an encoder. So how did we uh, encode those from this uh, business logic service? We trick, uh, we do many API calls to this mm, media engine, the encoder. And when it finished, it come back with a with a callback, and then we do some uh, mm, post processing, like update the result in our database, uh, etc. So for this flow. In order to, sorry, in order for it to complete it, first we have to do okay 240p. After it completed, it come back to the video service, and we do when we process the callback, we trigger another tree, and when each of these three completed, yeah, again we do some post processing there, and release. So one problem you can see here is. Uh, it's just a change of network calls. It's very uh, unreliable that you can uh, you cannot trust the network anytime. When it fails, it's uh, very hard to detect. There's no way we can notice that uh, we can know where it failed and why. Yeah. Uh, usually, then the, our content operation team will just go to us and say, "Hey, hey, why is this video encoding?" It's taking so long, and what happened to this, etc. <laughs> yeah. And of course, yeah, it needs to rehaul and redesign. So at the end of uh, 2017, we sit down again, just me and another guy. He is uh, there. Yeah, thanks. And that we wanted to redesign and uh, make it. Uh, Better. So how better, actually? Uh, we list out our priorities when we wanted to redesign this. First, we have to model it as a workflow. It, i it is a workflow, so we cannot. Uh, we have to model it as a real world, as a workflow. It cannot be a chain of network calls anymore. 
we need to have visibility into the system in a sense that uh, when an encoding is running, we need to know w w uh, at which phase it is running, what uh, and how long it might take mm, to finish. Have debuggability, of course, the rel reliable and it has to be scalable because we were getting more and more content at the rate of maybe 5x or 10x at that time. So, okay, why step functions? Mm, we were considering a lot of tools for workflow orchestration. So we have uh, maybe Apache Airflow. We have, uh, AWS also have another service called Simple Workflow. And so why did we choose step function? Yeah, <coughs> first thing is it has many cool features, <laughs> particularly because it was a young service at that time. It was at the end of 2017, it was only one year old, so I think. And it's easy to use, what, what we feel like. Uh, it's easy to integrate with other parts of the AWS ecosystem. We were already using AWS S3 and other um, components in the AWS ecosystem. It has nice visual of workflows. I will show you later what it means. And yeah, service at that time. Okay, this is one example of a uh, AWS step function console. You can see clearly that this is a visualization of the, a, a particular workflow. I just give an example. With the color code, now you can see which uh, route it went and what happened at each step. The green color means success. We, if it's red color, then it failed needs to retry or it's blue color is running in progress. And for each step, you can click into and see here. I uh, click into and then see what's the input output of this step and together with the input output of the whole flow as well. Okay. <laughs> what are, are the co uh, concepts of the step function? Mm. Now we have a state machines. It is not what uh, is mostly the same, but it's not what uh, the finite state machine that we have been studying. So uh, just for the purpose of this talk, uh, please help me try to forget it a bit and then yeah, just uh, focus on the concept of a state function. It, it consists of finite state. For each state, uh, it has several types. It's, it is either a task type where we do some work in that state. It could be a choice type where we make some uh, choice condition like if, else, and yeah, either um, uh, like a switch case or something equal to something or not. So, uh, it could be a fail or succeed state. Uh, if it's a fail or success state, we will st stop an execution and indi indicate that it, uh, the flow has failed or has succeeded. It could be just a pass state where we pass the input, pass through the input to the output and there's nothing. It could be a wait state where we delay the flow for a particular amount of time or until some point in time. So either you can wait for 10 seconds or you can wait until uh, 2020, 1st mm, of G January at 1 p.m., like that. Or it could be a parallel state where we will begin branching out. Uh, you could indicate that uh, is, uh, in this parallel state, you will do two, three, four, five branches in parallel. When uh, a parallel state is considered succeeded, when all the branches succeeded. The syntax is, uh, they call it Amazon state language, but it's just an extended version of JSON with some JSON part. And for example, this is how we define a state. Uh, this is the state name is hello world, it's type task. The resource here is uh, what resource will do this task? Right now, it's a, a you can see it's a lambda function. Lambda function is a 
AWS services where you can just write the code and then let AWS run it for you. You don't have to care about servers or provisioning or the machines is on the cloud. Just focus on writing the code. Yeah, this is a unique name of a Lambda function, a particular Lambda function that you have may have write code for it and then in here you just define that uh, this that function will do this work, this task. Next, this will indicate uh, after this task, then what state we transited, uh, when transited to, and you can have some comments on the state. Right. So how to use step functions? I say it's easy to use, so what uh, can uh, we, how can we use it? First you should draw your state machine on your whiteboard or yeah, on paper, record it, it any way you like, and define your state machine in a JSON file. It's actually a Amazon state language, and implement your workers. So what I mean when uh, I say implement your worker is that uh, AWS will uh, state function will take care of uh, controlling the flow, right? any condition you may like parallelly, uh, ranching, weight, everything. And you just have to focus on the task state where you have to do some work and implement your worker to do that work. You can implement it as an activity with polling based mechanism in a sense that uh, your piece of code will call step function API to get the task. Give me the task. And I do it. After that, you report the result back. This is only applicable for the task type or as the Lambda function as well. So what's the good thing with the, if you implement your code as a Lambda function is that it's a push base, not a polling base. When you have a task in the queue, step function will trigger your Lambda function. So uh, you don't have to pull it, mm, to, uh, constantly pulling it to get the task. It will only be triggered when you have an actual task. With, if you do it as, an, uh, as a polling base and you have to constantly pull it and say, uh, just wasting your resources. Okay, this is a, an example of a state machine. You have a start at to indicate a, uh, this, which state when your state machine execution will start with. This is an S state. You have a timeout seconds, a 10 seconds. This means after 10 seconds, if your flow has not completed, it will be marked as timeout. And this is a list of states that you have in your state machine. For S state, it is a task type. So you have to have a resource, uh, which resource will do this task. And true, this means uh, this is a final step uh, final state of the state machine. Yeah. So what are benefits we can see when we're using uh, step functions? Each task we can configure with exponential retry. Yeah, of course, any uh, task, mm, when you fail it, you want to retry. Um, we can configure timeout time. So the whole timeout of the task or the heartbeat timeout. Let's say simple, you have a long running task of like two, three hours and suddenly it hangs somewhere. So you want to have a heartbeat for that. Every two or three minutes, you will call set function to say, hey, I'm still running. Don't terminate me. Yeah. And if you don't have this heartbeat, maybe in your worker, your, it hangs somewhere and you have no way to detect it. And yeah, if if you have or uh, have a way to detect it, you may restart it and then let it um, start the work again. It may complete faster than uh, just wait. Restful error handling. So each task can report errors back to step functions. You can uh, and what's a good thing is that you can make choices for the workflow depending on what type of error you report back. 
for example, when we do videos and encoding, there are sometimes content providers give us a corrupted file, and doesn't matter how many times we retry, that, that file cannot be processed. And we want it to distinguish it with some maybe database failure, network failures that can be retried. So eventually, uh, for database failures and network failures, we uh, wanted to retry it for like <coughs> uh, tens, I mean, a uh, few hours or it to even into days. When it comes back, it will continue uh, automatically. Yeah, I just show you the step function console. It's easy to visualize your task input and output and visualize the current state of the workflow. So how do we use it in Wiki? This is an example of uh, a um, state machine of a flow that we have in step function and Wiki. I would not uh, go <coughs> too details into that, but yeah, I just want to give you a sense of like how the flow looks like from this state. Uh, this state is a job completed, dependent on what's the output of it, we might go to uh, three or four states altogether. Yeah, first version, we uh, all our workers are polling based, so we did not use any step function because uh, sorry, did not, we did not use any lambda function because we did not have resources at that time to to try it out and then um, yeah to see if it works. Uh, we just want to have a quick prototype, so we see that okay. We just call it's simple. Call step functions API. Get the work, do some work, and report back. It run on our servers, our own servers. And at that time, we decided the number of workers for each task uh, based on our own judgment. Some tasks we think, okay, this task may get called more times than the others. Then we give it a three or five workers each. Some tasks may get called less, so one worker is enough. What are the pitfalls that we, uh, we stumbled into? Hmm. When the system kill, scale, the failure will scale as well. <laughs> That's true. So after we uh, build that service with step function, now we can um, scale very easily. Any encoding flow just trigger a step function. So we only do the work in the task. And uh, we saw that we can easily do uh, 10 times, 20 times more. But uh, when we have a bug in the code, then is that the failure is uh, much more catastrophic because it, yeah, right now we're running much more than previous. <laughs> Does fail too fast? Okay, what I meant is that, so we set a retry time to only five, sec uh, five times for each task with only one second delay in between. And the exponential base is two. So the duration from the first time uh, uh, the task is being processed and to the fifth time which is the final time is only 32 seconds so in that time there, there's nothing we can do even if we detect it after one minute <laughs> very strong error when building tasks yeah what uh, I just say that we want to distinguish between file errors or, mm, and database errors network errors but uh, we had some bugs in the code that we reported wrongly. So the database error will, any database error will end the flow mm, immediately. And then that day we have a actual database errors that mm, I think few hundreds of our encoding was failed and we have to run it over again from the start. <laughs> we did not set time out for some tasks. So it was running for a very long time and not until our team asks us again, hey, what happened with this video? That we actually go in and check. <laughs> it did not send a heartbeat for long running tasks. There were no proper alerts set up because this was just a prototype version. When a task fail or f uh, execution fail, uh, we did not receive anything to act on that. 
and so later we get, uh, get to use CloudWatch matrix. So any mm, when you use that function, there were already some default matrix like number of execution, number of tasks completed, fail, time out, etc. Uh, that was piped to CloudWatch. In Wiki, we use uh, SignalFX as our main monitoring system. So we uh, use an integration from CloudWatch to pump the metrics to SignalFX, so we have a single place to look at. OK, now we solve some, some problems. It's not the end. <laughs> so API calls to step function can be throttled. OK, this is a quite a Mm, big lesson that we learned when we use any third-party system, uh, third-party product, they know they will always be quota. You cannot take all the resources. So one day we, I think that day we got like 100 videos encoded, and suddenly we saw half of the videos failed. And <laughs> so, okay, so, so we went in and see. So, so some uh, our API calls to step function was throttle. I think the limit was only like ten requests per second, something, and we exceeded that limit. We had to contact and our support. They get back to us and increase the limit after one or two days. That's not immediate, actually. Yeah, it could not scale easily. It, I mean, it could not scale easily because, okay, uh, previously we only set the number of workers for each task a, as a high coded number. It's a task A few. Hmm, this task seem heavy, give it five workers. This task B, this task seem light. Okay, one worker is enough. And uh, suddenly we realized that, hey, okay, we want to give. Uh, has to be more workers, what do we have to do? Due to, li to the limit of system at that time, uh, we have uh, to change our config. It's, it's, you can imagine it's a config file with A, file, B, tree, something like that, and then deploy again. Mm. Deploying service is taking a lot of time, so we could not uh, scale, mm, could not act on it and then scale it in a short time. Using a common worker for generic task may block execution. Okay, uh, at that time we try to reuse uh, the worker as much as we can because we don't want to build, implement new workers. Uh, there were time pressure as well, so we yeah we would like to reuse the workers. One of the workers we reuse is to check if something has finished or not. Okay, so imagine you have task A and then task B. Uh, a is dependent on B, so B has to complete it first before A can be completed. But uh, the task to check if A is completed first, it was scheduled before the task to check B. So, it, hmm, how let's say the task to check A is scheduled ten times. So in uh, in the in that time, even B has completed, we don't know because the uh, task to check B has not uh, been processed yet. S so during I think maybe 10 minutes, uh, one hour or something, it, that time could be safe if we actually check B first. So the order is important. Some of our workers are slow. So uh, that time, we, uh, in the first version, we used Ruby to build our workers. It was on our team. Mm. The two main languages we use is Ruby and Golang, and I was more comfortable with Ruby at the time. So yeah, we decided to write in Ruby, and since Ruby is single threaded, and uh, for some heavy tasks, it's quite very slow. So what did we do? We moved some workers to Golang and to Lambda function. Th uh, these go hand in hand. At that time, we say, yeah, it's better to move some uh, workers to Lambda functions. So if we have uh, 1,000, 10,000 tasks, step function can trigger 10,000 of them in parallel and then finish it at once. 
if we still use our workers and we have to do it in sequence. And since Lambda function did not support Ruby at the time, so okay, we want to use Golang. And since Golang is, a, uh, is better for concurrency, yeah, it's, it was much faster. So yeah, with the help of Lambda functions and new workers are now push based instead of polling based. Mm. Okay, seems like we saw a lot of problems. So what's the current state of the system, what we have come to? Right now we have around 20 state machines and type with 15,000 execution per day. We have around 50 worker types with 50,000 tasks completed. We have less than 0 0.02 failures in the half, last half of the year. I think this is a much more important point because uh, it makes our life as an engineer better. <laughs> and in terms of business, now we can support around 100 videos encoded per day into 30 jobs per video, which is like 3,000 um, jobs. Okay, the one f flow I showed you is uh, correspond to one video, but it's just a simplified version. In Actually, it's a much more complex. Uh, even though step function is such a great tool that I have uh, presented, I still have uh, some drawbacks and some pain points that I wish it will solve in the future. It's a child state machine support. So um, right now, step function does not have a concept of parent that trigger a child or one uh, set on flow, trigger another flow, wait for the fl that flow to complete it, and then come back. If I have a uh, uh, state machine support, then I can build more um, abstraction on a state machine. Like the first few tasks is pre process, and then the actual work is carried out in a whole different flow, and then after that, some post process. Signal and execution. Right now, there's no way for me to pause an execution or resume. Let's say I need to take a bug in my code in a worker. I cannot pause the execution and uh, say, hey, wait for me to fix my bug first. And <laughs> I cannot do that. And yeah, I, I cannot wait for a callback as well. So let's say I call some third party services that trigger some job. I wanted to wait for that job to complete before continuing with my flow. Right now, I cannot do it. I have to uh, overcome that by have a, a loop that is constantly waiting. Just use Rx. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's constantly waiting for like, one, after one minute, I check again. Is it completed? No. Come, go back to wait. Something like that. Dynamic branching based on output of task. So now in a parallel task, I have to predefine that I, have, I want to run three branch, four branch in, this, uh, in parallel. It would be nicer if I run some tasks, I get the output, maybe a list, and then depend on the length of the list, maybe we have 10 items, I run all the 10 in parallels, that make my life better. So summary, building a reliable workflow is difficult. We have to go through many iterations, uh, even though with some great tool coming from AWS, it will still take you a few months to try prototyping and few iteration, bug fixing, rec recognize that this part of your design is not good, uh, to actually come to a reliable and scalable version. New tools will always equals new problems. And <laughs> when you bring in a new tools in your system, you have to deal with right, its all problems. As even step function is great, but then uh, every time now I want to scale, uh, suddenly I want to scale up, 
I get throttled by API call. Uh, hey, uh, hey guys, can you increase my limit? Something like that. And it's always very important to define your priorities when you approach a problem. And most of the time, you should have these criteria as your priorities. Uh, yeah, okay. With that, I come to an end of my presentation. You have any questions?